Hi, this is Dan Breton with the Intel Corporation, and in this video, I'll be going over some high-level concepts you need to know before you deploy Intel Endpoint Management Assistant. The first concept is that Intel Endpoint Management Assistant is multi-tenant in that you can have a single install of Intel EMA, and you can go through and have multiple tenants inside of there, each of them with their own unique collection of computers, and they cannot see one another's devices. So this is great for systems integrators or ISVs that want to be able to run uh, an instance of Intel Endpoint Management Assistant themselves to uh, offer up out-of-band capabilities or uh, uh, remote management capabilities to their customers. This is also great for IT if they want to be able to go through and separate out uh, different types of users, different types of devices, uh, different groups of people for uh, various business reasons. Next, I'd like to talk about the different installation options you have for Intel Endpoint Management Assistant. First, uh, this is our first tool that's designed to work in the cloud. It allows you to go through and install in a, a, a cloud-based web service uh, to be able to manage devices wherever they are with a, a single install. And uh, we do recommend that you uh, think about using client-initiated remote access-based AMT configurations in these environments, and we'll talk to that here in just a moment. I have the ability to install on-prem, which is uh, you know, great for legacy IT shops who prefer to keep all that kind of stuff inside the firewall. You get a little more flexibility on the AMT configuration models, but do realize if it's on-prem that all those great features about managing devices outside of the firewall uh, may not be available depending on your configuration. And for those who are kind of looking for the best of both worlds, you've got various DMZ options, and that could take the form of running your VMs uh, for Emma on-premises and exposing them to the Internet, or vice versa, running them in the cloud and then setting up a, a, a network layer a VPN between your cloud provider that's running Emma and your uh, IT network uh, inside the firewall, so you can kind of have a bit of the best of both worlds. So in the previous slide, I talked about client initiator remote access, or CIRA for short, and uh, yeah, I want to talk a little more about why it's important for, uh, for hardware-level manageability with Intel Active Management Technology uh, when you're going to use a cloud-based EMMA instance. So first, it provides a secure channel for managing uh, data flowing over the Internet. Obviously, you don't want this management traffic to be uh, observed by anybody else, so we use a, a mutual TLS encrypted uh, communication channel uh, where, yeah, again, both sides validate the connection is authentic. Uh, another key point, too, for these devices that you manage in serial mode is that the local management ports that are normally present in a TLS configuration on Intel AMT are shut off so that you don't have to worry about systems on diverse networks, you know, say at a coffee shop, exposing any kind of management ports that could be used as a, an additional attack surface. The other key thing is it provides a mechanism for clients and uh, management servers to actually find each other. If you think about you know, how diverse the Internet is, it's not always easy to be able to look up a device. So it's a phone home capability where the, the serial provision device calls home to the management server, letting it know where it is and that it's available to be managed, and it makes it much easier to go and track down and discover the systems you actually can manage in your environment. So if you plan on using Intel Endpoint Management Assistant and Intel Active Management Technology and a cloud-based install, there's a few considerations you want to think about. First, you have to have uh, what I consider a known network. Let's start out with what a known network is. There's a couple of attributes to it. First, it's a network that has access to the Internet so that your Intel MS server in the cloud can pass traffic back and forth to your device that you want to manage. And in the case of Intel Active Management Technology and certain proxy configurations, it may require a a specific platform generation to be able to support working behind a proxy server. Also, the network has to be one that Intel AMT can authenticate with. So for Wi-Fi networks, we support 802.1x and pre-shared keys. Uh, and for wired networks, we also support 802.1x authentication. Now, building on this concept of Intel EMMA and uh, AMT in the cloud, I want to talk about some network scenarios that can cause some difficulty in those that uh, AMT works well in. So if we talk about supported scenarios, those are, you know, again, we talked about those known networks. If there's, say, working in a, a traditional office or co-working space, if there's no need to accept uh, terms and conditions to connect to Wi-Fi, you're all set. Uh, home offices uh, are pretty easy to do, too. We can simply add the wireless network that a home user has to Intel AMT, either automatically through uh, profile synchronization or uh, manually by IT adding it in. And if you think about other kind of IoT and embedded usage, digital signage, smart vending machines, et cetera, or devices you may have spread around, uh, you know, even a, a smart billboard along a highway. Uh, in those cases, uh, uh, if you have on-prem internet available, we recommend using that. But if you don't have some type of on-premises internet available, you can also use a, an Ethernet or Wi-Fi to cellular device to uh, 
take and allow a, a Ethernet connection or a Wi-Fi network connection back to the Internet over the cellular network. Now let's talk about the difficult-to-support scenarios. Uh, these are cases where you typically have some kind of captive portal you have to authenticate with in order to get on with Wi-Fi. So if you've ever been to a coffee shop, a restaurant, or, or an airport where they provide Wi-Fi, they usually have you attached to the Wi-Fi network, go into a web browser, accept some terms and conditions, perhaps supply an email address, and once you've gone through those steps, you're able to get on. And in most cases, that's just fine for Intel Endpoint Management Assistant, Intel AMT, and manageability. You'll be able to go through and uh, take advantage of that connection. IT will be able to support you remotely if needed, and you should be able to take care of most use cases just fine. However, I do want to point out that if you're unable to accept those terms and conditions, uh, say, for instance, you've been on a plane, you've been working, and you had a problem with your laptop, you get off the plane and think, oh, there's Wi-Fi at the airport, I'll use that. Well, if there's no way for you to go in with a web browser and accept the terms and conditions, apply your email address, that sort of thing, there's no way for AMT to authenticate with that same network and be able to get on. So I just want to make sure we're clear on that. Uh, in those cases, though, if you do have kind of what we refer to is you know, the road warrior types, the people who are always on the go. Uh, you can work around these kind of issues by supplying them with a hotspot or pre-configuring settings on their phone if it provides a hotspot so you can go through, turn on that Wi-Fi hotspot on their phone and still be able to make use of active management technology by allowing it to use, again, that kind of uh, Wi-Fi to cellular bridge. Uh, so with laptops, there's a, one other thing to point out. Uh, laptop devices that are not plugged into power and are in a hibernate or an off state do not actually have AMT running, and that's for a couple of reasons. We don't want to drain people's batteries uh, overnight. And two is, well, you know, we don't know uh, if, uh, if the system's in a person's bag, that if it could overheat if we bring it online and have it do some type of work that could be processor intensive. Next, I'd like to talk about uh, the provisioning modes we have for active management technology inside Intel Endpoint Management Assistant. So we have two modes that we support today, TLS provisioning and SERA provisioning. So TLS provisioning is designed primarily for on-prem type of usage models. Uh, one great feature with Intel Emma is it has its own built-in certificate authority. So if you're familiar with Intel Active Management Technology configuration, you don't have to worry about certs anymore. Intel Emma issues those certs to clients automatically. And also it leaves the local management ports open on devices. So it allows easy interoperation with other on-premises tools that you may have in your environment that you want to work with, other third-party tools that support Intel Active Management Technology. We've already talked about SIRA provisioning a fair amount, so I won't dig into too much detail here, but the whole idea with SIRA is that instead of the device sitting there with management ports open waiting to be managed by something, instead here with SIRA, Intel Active Management Technology opens up a VPN-like tunnel from the chipset right to your Intel Endpoint Management Assistant server for managing that device, and that works great over the internet especially. Well, that's going to do it for the high-level concepts I wanted to talk about regarding Intel Endpoint Management Assistant. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to talking to you more.